Musical Talk, the UK independent musical theatre podcast. So we're here to talk about Tony, the rock opera that I saw last week. I'm here with Jonathan Cohen. Hello, Jonathan. Hello. You didn't see Tony, the rock opera. but I, we... I didn't, but I wish I had done, I have yes. to say. Um, you, you know Steve Brown, who did the music and lyrics, and it's a funny story how you kind of introduced me to him over the road from where we were recording. Yes, because I, um, years and years ago, after I finished doing a, a children's programme called Play Away, which came to an end in the 80s, uh, there was a program a follow-up called a series called fast forward uh and steve brown had written some songs for that and i i think i i musical directed them i played on them certainly um and i got to know steve then they were brilliant songs um a couple of pastiches as far as i remember there was a very good country and western sort of yeah. um, pastiche uh then I think he might have written something for something else for me. I can't remember now. But we were in a restaurant, weren't we? And you and another friend left. And there was a person sitting opposite. And he suddenly went, hello, Jonathan. And I went, hello. And he said, it's Steve Brown. I said, good Lord, we were just talking about you. We were, you. at that meal. We were, because Nick was coming to see Tony. Tony. And um, I said, oh, my goodness, I'll go and get... Nick, because he wants to interview you. And if, and if you go back in the archive, you can hear that interview. It's a very good exactly. interview talking about the show. I've since seen the show. Um, I, I'm kind of mixed feelings about it. I absolutely adored the show, but I have issues, sadly, with the direction and the theatre itself, which is no fault of the show. The Park Theatre, no fault of the theatre that I was suffering from incredible backache at the time because I hurt my foot and blah, 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 blah. So I was in the front row, and thank you very much to the, to the um, show for letting me come and see it. And so I was kind of... It's sort of those very uncomfortable, just completely upright bench seats that you just can't really get comfortable in. And I, because I was in the very front row, and it's a thrust stage production, so I wasn't facing the cast, I was on the side... And the issue I had with the show was they would, it was directed a lot toward the front. And because I was very much in the front of the side, I had trouble hearing a lot of the lyrics. And it's always a shame because Steve Brown's lyrics and music are well worth hearing yeah, in my mind. Abs- absolutely. Um, so unless they were facing me... I couldn't hear it. And when they were facing me, I was sometimes getting a kind of harmony line being yelled in my face because I was getting the natural sound as opposed to the, the kind of no, I understand the mix that. of the sound. Uh, I'm not sure how you would deal with that quite because uh, you can't suddenly have everyone doing everything. No. You know, I just think it's, in, I think it's in the wrong theatre, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But what I could hear, I laughed, I smiled... Um, I didn't cry because I don't think you can make the story of Tony Blair that emotional. Um, and it reminded me of a lot of the, the stuff that, that happened. Of course, I was a bit too young to really be interested sure. in the kind of politics of Tony Blair. Um, I learned he was Scottish, which was quite fun. I learned that... Uh, well, the name Blair is yeah. a clue there, yeah. <laughs> Sherry Blair was Liverpudley, and I didn't know that. Yes, and she's the daughter of... Um, oh. An actor, anyway, yeah. yes, yes. And um, we had kind of Gordon Brown. There's a very funny scene, I remember, with Gordon Brown, where they met at university. And um, Gordon Brown wanted the top bunk. And Tony Blair was said, no, I'll give you the top eventually. You can go to the top first, but let me go to the top. And then when I'm gone, you can go to the top, obviously foreshadowing the kind of... Yeah. Um, and this is a script by Harry Hill and uh, music and lyrics by Steve Brown. A great collaboration, of course, uh, you have to mention I Can't Sing, the X Factor musical, uh, yes. which didn't run as long as it should have, I think. It was very, you know, it, the Tony Blair rock opera, Tony, the rock opera, a reference to Tommy, the rock opera, 
I think. Um, yes, and you've thought about it's that. It's very, very pantomime, very, very satirical, almost like Spitting Image, I think. And we have to say that Steve did the songs for Spitting Image. We do. As well. So he was kind of very comfortable at home. And I remember he said in the interview, the thing about Spitting Image is you could only get sort of two minutes to do the joke, whereas here you can have as long as you want to do a song. And we had some wonderful songs. There was a... Osama Bin Laden comes on and sings a rock and roll number. Um, there's a Welsh mining choir song. There's, a, as Steve said, there's this kind of, uh, recit- kind of quasi-recitative um, with a speech about kind of economics, which is verbatim. So he's, he's dipping his fingers into many holes. Yes. Here. And is he's, there, he's is, very is good Is there going that. to be an album of this music? I would hope so. Yeah. Um, I don't know, because the, the reason I would like an album is to sit down and hear the songs properly. Um, the the chap playing Tony was very good. He didn't look like Tony. He was a bit bigger. And if you were a fan of I Can't Sing and you saw him, he played the hunchback in that, uh, rapped brilliantly in that show. And in this show, he almost has a kind of... Well, the ending of the show is wonderful because every it's called Every World Leader is an Arsehole, which the fortuitous timing of this piece, you can't deny is b- brilliant and not planned because we had the whole... You know, it's been open, a, a previewing has been open for a while, but it's had, we've had the Boris Johnson stuff, now there's stripes, tube strike issue, you know, we're going back to the yeah, 70s yeah. practically, aren't we? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and there's this great kind of number called uh, uh, All World Leaders Are Arseholes, where Steve Brown very cleverly goes through every world leader, makes it rhyme, and does it as a patter song. But I couldn't hear it. No. You know, and it's a shame. So no no fault on the writing, just a bit careless, I would think, yeah. on the direction. Um, we had Princess Diana, which yes. is lovely. Which, um, of course, was one of the first major uh, dramas that mm. um, Tony Blair had to deal with in his he, leadership. I, I didn't yeah. know he came up with the turn the people's princess. He absolutely did. So I was learning from this musical. Very good, Nick. Which yeah. is very good. And we had Hessel Tyne as well, oh, yeah. with the kind of funny long hair, looked like um, Scarecrow. And um, do I mean Hesseltine? Is that? I don't think you do. Hesseltine no. was in the Tory party, so oh, he wasn't in the. Well, and politics is not my strong point. No, no, we need not. our friend Stephen here to correct me on everything. <laughs> um, we did have Gordon Brown. We had Robin Cook come on. Okay. Um, mention, you know, he said, "All oh, my heart's feeling a bit funny," and and some of the jokes were a bit. <laughs> Ooh, which is good because you know that's what oh, yeah. Harry Hill does, and it really kind of. It does stretch a bit more. Yeah. I mean, it needs to offend, and I'm hoping it did a bit. Well, I don't think anything can ever offend. You can just choose to be offended. No, but you know what it I mean. It needs to... Yes, but I mean, it, it, it punched. Yes, it, it needs to punch, punch you in, in, the, punch yeah, in yeah. the throat. Um, and the, at the end of Act One is brilliant, because it had, um, you know, everything was going so well for the Labour Party, because it was new Labour, and it was, you know... Um, Brilliant, I guess. And then, what could possibly go wrong? And then, as a, I guess it's a kind of tribute to kind of, I can't sing when we're reading too much into it, they had the voiceover guy who said, Coming up after the break, Osama Bin Laden, George W. Bush. So we had that all in Act 2. Yeah. I preferred Act 1 over Act 2 because it was more stuff I didn't know. Okay. So it was. I, I was able to kind of enjoy learning more information as opposed to kind of sitting through the rather depressing Twin Towers falling and all the war yeah. in Iraq and but stuff. But why do you think um, Tony, the rock opera? I think because Tony's image, because throughout the show he just wants to be like Mick Jagger or Mick Jagger's. Yeah, because he was it. part of a band, wasn't he? So it's that kind of glam, 90s glam rock kind of... Is he like a sort of fallen rock star? Because he was, did have his high point, then he had his massive, yeah. you know, fall. Yeah. So it is that kind of hero. Story. And I suppose also, um, it was, we all needed a change, and it was all so optimistic at the beginning mm. of his, his term. Yeah. Yeah. And the band was um, a keyboardist and a bass player slash guitar player. And I think, to, for me, to get the pastiche across more, I would have liked more instruments, or at least a better kind of realm of tracks mm. to play with, because mm. I couldn't tell what exactly, what exact sound... Because a lot of pastiche is in the orchestration, not so much the, the melody and the, the... And it's something Steve is brilliant at. So I think this would benefit from a, a bit of a bigger production. I can't 
fault the cast at all. Very, very good. But I think it needs a bit of a restage and it needs a bit of a bigger band to yeah. give a kind of... Are they doing a Brit... I mean, do you think this was... I mean, was this basically a sort of tryout for something know. else um, later or something? Maybe? It's, it's a very kind of odd choice for a show, but I think it's got a good title. Mm. Um, oh, very much so. And it'd be interesting to see how, where it does go on. But it does feel a bit like a kind of Edinburgh show done by people that really, really know what they're doing, but yet directed by someone who doesn't quite know what they're doing when it comes to the venue right had i seen it front on it probably would have been a lot better because they were doing kind of gags and there's a for instance there's a gag where he goes on um he gets a suitcase out and puts it on the table and he's taking guitars and plant 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 pots out of it and stuff and i could see the person feeding it in so it really shouldn't be playing in those side slip seats right um and stuff. And there was a gag at the very beginning when there's a woman, his mother, lying there and a little um, head comes out of a box with a little kind of toy, with a baby kind of cuddly toy underneath and pretending to be Tony Blair as a baby. And that didn't work for me because I couldn't see it at all. So again, it needs to be more... F- yes. Yeah. But it's very, very enjoyable. If you can go and see it, do. How long is it on for? Uh, it's on to the 9th of July, so do go and see it. You can check parktheatre.co.uk. Would you go, Jonathan? Yeah, I certainly would. Yeah. The other thing is, of course, we haven't mentioned um, Steve's musical Spend, 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 have we? Well, not not you and I, but... Uh, no, I but I mean, not, not, not the fact that Steve, Steve yeah. wrote that and... Uh, that the Olivier great. award-winning Spend, 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 Absolutely. we should say. Um, and, and so much other stuff. So if, if you like satirical songs satirical, zany plays, sketches. Um, it, it very much does feel, ironically, like a kind of Footlights production. Um, because that's, I wouldn't say that's what they're going for, but it is very kind of, we're making fun of ourselves. And that's yeah. what the Brits yeah. do very well. Um, I look forward to Boris, the rock opera. Because that could be, or Corbin the Rock Opera, even. Um, I know. I think that would be. Mm, no, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> they all have stories to tell. Yes. But parktheatre.co.uk. Do go and check it out, Jonathan. Thank you very much. And not at all. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Musical Talk. To find out more about the world of musical talk, you can visit our website at musicaltalk.co.uk, where you'll find all our episodes, or you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Musical Talk.